When the National Aeronautics and Space Administration hired this woman, some of your parents weren't allowed to vote. The coloured water fountain was thriving and whites-only schools still existed across America. Still, none of the above could stop Valerie Laverne Thomas from going on to patent groundbreaking technology NASA still uses today, prospective surgeons right now employ in their training, and television brands are currently trying to utilize. But get this, based on just the little research we've done here at Trill Black, it's actually possible that Valerie Thomas is also the unsung hero behind the invention of the internet. This is blasphemy. This is madness. No, it's true. Prove it, you say. Challenge accepted. Brace yourself, for you are about to hear the story of an unbelievable woman who, at the time of this video's creation, is still with us. So, without further ado, here we go. From an early age, it was clear that Valerie Thomas was gifted. A biographical paper on her life by Oregon State University says that a teenage Valerie was always reading and tinkering, to the extent that her high school teachers in Baltimore often had to give her extra work and projects just to satisfy her precocious mind. Now obviously, if Valerie was to make the most of her talents, she would need to go to university. But according to the Oregon paper just mentioned, Valerie graduated from the all-girls Western High School in 1961 at a time in America's civil rights history when university integration was just beginning across the southern half of America. So what to do, what to do? Oh, what's this? Morgan State University, Baltimore, Maryland is a public, historically black research university. Yep, Valerie told one half of America to keep their drama and she just straight up applied to Morgan State in her hometown. But let's not get ahead of ourselves now. Would she be accepted? Yeah, she got in. Uh, come on now, folks. Three years later, in 1964, she graduated Morgan State with a degree in physics with the highest honours. And in 1965, guess who came knocking with a job offer? NASA. Now, it's not every day you graduate with a physics degree and NASA comes beating your door down. Yeah, yeah, affirmative action, I bet. Maybe. Or maybe she was actually that gifted. After all, NASA was already reaping the fruits of these three women's labor. Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson and Dorothy Vaughan, later famously depicted in the movie Hidden Figures. So why not try out other potential black prodigies? In 1965, NASA did just that and hired Valerie Thomas as a mathematician and data analyst. This is even more extraordinary when you understand that maths is something Miss Thomas had to teach herself while at high school, as teaching resources at a predominantly black school were very lacking at the time. But at NASA, Thomas didn't remain a glorified number cruncher. Her rise through the NASA ranks was, well, you might say, stratospheric. Don't hate, just appreciate. In just five years, Valerie Thomas was promoted to working on something called Landsat. What's that? Well, the year was 1970, and Landsat was a satellite-based space imaging project that would capture images of Earth from space, the first ever technology of its kind. And who do NASA ask to lead the team of scientists working on this project? Yep, Valerie Thomas. Still backing the affirmative action angle? I wouldn't because according to numerous sources, Valerie was the be-all and end-all of the Landsat program, the go-to person, numero uno for understanding and developing this new technology. NASA's James L. Green, who worked with Ms. Thomas on Landsat, said in 1995 that for over 10 years, quote, Valerie Thomas managed the development of Landsat image processing data systems, becoming known internationally as an expert contact for Landsat data products. Close quote. But he's been modest on her behalf. Let Valerie Thomas tell you her story herself. When NASA started providing scientists with Landsat digital tapes, they were also given documentation about the image data on the tapes in a high-level mathematical format. The scientists had difficulty in understanding how the digital data on the tape matched the visual images represented on the hard copy or computer screen. I was able to understand and answer questions that other scientists doing Landsat research had. 
Therefore, when scientists from around the world had questions about the Landsat digital data, they were referred to me. Initially, it provided me with an ego massage. However, after continually receiving so many of the same questions, I decided to make the information explicit, as simple as possible, and publish it in a document. The document was so popular that it had to be reprinted and I was even getting phone call requests. One of the callers indicated that the scientists at their facility thought that they could not live without it. As future Landsats were launched, relevant versions of the document were published. Close quote. This is exactly the kind of work that gets Thomas transferred onto the Lacey project. Another first at NASA. Lacey stands for Large Area Crop Investment Experiment. This project took the data from the images NASA's Landsat program was capturing and used it to predict worldwide crop yields. Guess who led that project as well? Okay, it's getting a bit obvious now. Well, James L. Green says Valerie did. In 1974, Valerie headed a team of approximately 50 people for Lacey. Lacey demonstrated the feasibility of using space technology to automate the process of predicting wheat yield on a worldwide basis. And she did all of this on a budget. James L. Green says Lacey was, quote, accomplished with a minimum amount of time and money and a maximum amount of technical challenges, proving that every offset in life is being used for a setup later on, because it's this channel's belief that it was Valerie's background as a black girl from the streets of Baltimore during a particularly tough era for black Americans, which made her just the type of person to lead a project like Lacey on a shoestring budget. It's the same old story. The black girl finally gets given her big break, but now we're going to expect her to produce Avatar, cure cancer and save America with a grand total of a dollar and a dime. And nobody wanted to listen to Moni. Remember how Taraji said the trailers were infested? Yes. Our trailers blew up. Despite all of this, according to NASA's James L. Green again, Lacey, quote, was an overwhelming success, laying the groundwork for much of NASA and NOAA's work today in monitoring global food supplies and weather patterns. But it was at the same time as she was developing breakthrough space tech for NASA that Valerie made a breakthrough of her own, which would cement her place in scientific history. In 1976, she visits a science fair and witnesses an illusion of a glowing light bulb that had been unscrewed and removed from a lamp. This illusion was created using a second light bulb pointing downward in a socket beneath the top socket, employing a concave mirror to produce the illusion of the lit bulb because unlike flat mirrors, concave mirrors create images that appear to be 3D. Valerie was more than just fascinated by this cute party trick. She started to wonder how such an image could be transmitted like other electronic images were, and so she began experimenting. In 1980, she received a patent for her illusion transmitter, which used a concave mirror on the transmitting end as well as on the receiving end to produce optical illusion images. An illusion transmitter uses two parabolic mirrors to transmit 3D illusions of an object by use of a camera trained on the first mirror, which then sends video signals to a projector aimed at the second mirror. This technology is still being used by NASA today and scientists currently use the technology in surgeries to look inside the human body, while it's been developed for use in television sets. But wait, I thought you said she invented the internet. Okay, so in the late 1980s, Valerie Thomas, working with a group of other scientists, founded something called the Space Physics Analysis Network, SPAN. And this group of scientists convinced NASA to fund something called tail circuits, like phone lines from a NASA field center to local computers. NASA say that her and her SPAN team developed a computer network connecting research stations of scientists all over the globe in countries and continents like the USA, South America, Canada and Europe. In 1986, SPAN was reconfigured to increase performance and reliability in the communications highway through multiple nodes. Practically, SPAN linked space plasma physicists at NASA and other scientists working across astronomy, astrophysics, climatology 
and oceanography in something that works like an early prototype internet. As a result of Valerie's work leading the SPAN team, between 1986 and 1990, NASA reported that the project grew from a, quote, scientific network with about 100 computer nodes to one directly connecting about 2,700 computer nodes worldwide, close quote. It's this project and the elements from it that CERN incorporates into their development of the internet in the early 1990s. James L. Green at NASA said, quote, the SPAN project became a major part of the internet's early years, close quote. Now, when you go looking, Wikipedia in its mammoth entry on the internet don't even mention SPAN and how it contributed to the development of the internet. This isn't something made up by a pro-black channel wanting to hype up the achievements of a black woman. This is all documented by NASA itself. So why the silence on popular sources of information like Wikipedia? Well, you'll have to answer that one yourself. All the Trill and the Black are concerned with doing now is giving Valerie Thomas her flowers whilst she's still with us. All hail the Queen of 3D, NASA legend and internet pioneer, Valerie Laverne Thomas. From Cush to Compton, no doubt.